ಹೇಗೆ ಇದೆ Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to our industry friends, fellow colleagues, students and everyone joining us today in this IDE webinar series 4, Transport Design Innovation brought to you virtually. Design Department, Faculty of Art and Design, University Technology Mara Shah Alam, to provide you with the most insightful talk session that covers exciting perspective within the team of Transport Design Innovations. Today's session also aim to expose you to the current information related to transport design practice from both academic and industrial perspective. For these purposes, we have invited two respectful two respectful uh, speakers to deliver their talk via online. Uh, it is hoped that you may jot down and try to grab as many information as possible while listening to this talk. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to encourage students to actively participate in this talk by leaving some questions for our speakers today. You may leave your questions in the chat box provided and they will be answered by our speakers during the Q&A session by the end of their talk later. Kindly be informed that the attendance and feedback link will be shared at the end of the webinar. And don't forget to sign in to receive your participation certificates. And for UITM staff, training hours will be provided. Before for our session today, we'll begin with our, our webinar content on transport innovation by having Mr. Azhar Mohammad as our first speaker from Innovation Research Design Consultant, Auckland, New Zealand. Before I pass the screen to him, allow me to introduce Mr. Azhar Mohammad. After over 20 years as designer, university lecturer and manager for design departments, Azhar currently works with organizations to improve performance through innovation and service design. Initially trained in industrial design and product planning, Azahar currently consults in areas including curriculum design, learning and development, product innovation, and postgraduate research. Mr. Azahar has taught and supervised international award-winning projects in the areas of industrial, transport, interface, and visual communication design. His topic for today will be on Yacht Design 101, Flying on Water. So without further ado, I will pass the baton to Mr. Azaha for his talk on Yacht Design. Okay, over to you, uh, Mr. Azaha. Okay, thank you very much, Yacht. Is everybody can hear me? Can I get your hand, Yacht, if you can hear me? Yes, okay. good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes. Yeah. Assalamualaikum cool. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And and uh, have a very good um, uh, afternoon in Kuala Lumpur, or Shah Alam, and um, you know any, anywhere else you might be. Um, 
as Yad mentioned, I have been in New Zealand for, I think, um, just over 20 years now. Uh, I was a student uh, at UITM uh, before uh, I left uh, Malaysia and came to work in New Zealand. I left the academic world about three years ago and uh, since then I've been uh, consulting to a number of organizations but mainly um, tertiary institutions in terms of designing curriculums and helping in their um, um, recruitment of staff as well as uh, managing uh, uh, product development areas uh, within the uh, organization. Now, what I, would like to, what I would like to do now is actually to share my screen so that you can see this uh, very simple, uh, very much a show and tell presentation. So that, um, uh, and then I will just walk through uh, each of the image and hopefully um, I'll be able to share some of the things that I've learned over the years about uh, yacht design which essentially is uh, one of the uh, activities of industrial designers okay now so um, that is <laughs> basically that's uh, auckland that's actually uh, let me try to think uh, takapuna beach taken about two weeks ago that's uh, my daughter uh, New Zealand is in the middle of summer now and uh, we are extremely lucky because we are must be one of maybe three or four countries in the world that uh, are essentially uh, COVID free. So we are free to move anywhere, to go anywhere within the country and because of that we are able to host the uh, America's Cup 2021. So. Um, let me start with um, what I'm going to do in the next half an hour. So I'll give you a little bit of intro and then uh, I will look at um, how I perceive design innovation and where I was, where I am now. And then very swiftly, we move into yacht and uh, automotive design, if I may, even though I'm not an automotive designer, but just to draw some comparisons. And then we'll go directly into um, the topic of the seminar today, which is about um, the foiling aspects of yacht design. That's actually yacht these days actually fly instead of you know moving um, on the water or just uh, touching uh, the surface of the water. And then before we end, we'll talk a little bit about a mix of traditions. Now, uh, these are some of uh, the work that uh, I've done. And this is. Um, probably in the last five years or so. Uh, these are, some of it are actually uh, purely uh, under my supervision, some actually that I design with my uh, graduate and honor students. So that includes, for example, uh, automotive design, um, water-based designs, uh, industrial product design, uh, household, and so on. And um, some of the graduates actually have, you know, went on and run, uh, in the, uh, companies um, in London, in Europe. Uh, some actually went to work for some of the larger organizations. And uh, one of them actually was the head of uh, uh, future product development at Dyson. So he used to fly to Johor Bahru quite often. And now he's back in New Zealand. Um, and, and also um, in the last uh, few years, I um, work quite extensively in the area of uh, learning and development. I help um, senior managers at universities and, uh, for example, institutions like banks and finance companies to uh, harness the power of design so that their service delivery, delivery can be improved, whether it's actually for products or actual uh, services. Now, uh, before we move on, I would just like to play this video and I hope that you enjoy this video. It's not my video, it is actually a video of uh, the topic of the conversation today. Now, this is the 
the race for the Prada Cup just yesterday, and this was on the TV yesterday, when the team uh, American Magic representing uh, United States of America uh, capsized their boat. So obviously this was a huge disaster for them, but at the same time, it taught us a very good lesson of uh, how fast can you actually push these boats until you know you can't actually uh, the boat couldn't actually uh, withstand the pressure anymore and it starts uh, you know uh, caps uh, not capsizing starts uh, collapsing before it started uh, capsizing so um, in this particular video the commentator was saying that this was a very very well rehearsed uh, accident because as you can see after the accident the boat was able to be righted back up again um, you know almost within the within a few minutes but then as you can see the bow of the boat is actually starting to submerge and then what they didn't realize at this point of time is that there was a very big hole uh, in the hull so right now they are trying to actually uh, inflate the boat uh, so that I have to emphasize that this is part of the international um, uh, waterway for uh, some of the or for the largest cruise ship in the world. So this is very deep water. I think they were quite lucky yesterday because it was not too choppy. So you can see that these are some of the sailors, the engineers and designers helping each other, helping the team America to keep the boat afloat so that they can salvage whatever they can and race again next week. So the commentator was saying here about how the team spirit is truly well and alive. Here you can see the people uh, pumping the water out. You probably could not hear this, but there's a, a very noise uh, chopper um, uh, noise in the background. That chap there in the helmet, he's uh, Dean Barker, the helmsman or the driver of the America's Cup. Um, American Magic Team. So what happened um, at the end of the of the I suppose uh, event? Uh, they were able to bring the boat back to the shore. It took them five hours, even though it was not a great distance. And you can see the huge um, hole in the hull. Very interesting though, uh, they were saying that, well, you know, we'll get it right and we'll start racing again next Friday. So, um, as part of the end of this video, uh, you'll see that uh, the actual footage of the racing. In uh, most aspects of the race, uh, you'll see the involvement of designers, whether you are actually a graphic designer, industrial designer, fashion designer, uh, pattern making designer, as well as obviously uh, engineers, boat makers, sail makers, and so on. I think this is uh, extremely important, especially for uh, a coastal nation like Malaysia, whereby we have this huge opportunity to develop our own marine industry and start to uh, uh, train, especially our young people, to become uh, better at designing for this kind of uh, craft. So there are four teams competing. That's the Team UK, Team Italy, Team America, and Team New Zealand. Now, um, just to give you a little bit of um, uh, background, what is the, the America's Cup? America's Cup started in 1851. Uh, they, they say that it is the oldest uh, competitive um, um, uh, event in the world. Obviously, you know, uh, not as old as the Olympics, but uh, older than, for example, soccer or hockey and so on. And uh, this is actually um, 
uh, I believe it is a, an actual uh, photographic or lithography of uh, from that time uh, in south coast of England. Some of you may be aware of uh, a river called the Solent on the south coast of England. And this was when uh, the America's schooner, uh, this type of boat is called schooner with multiple wings, uh, passed by and took over the fastest English sailing boat at the time. So the Americans actually won this particular event. And uh, Queen, uh, I believe it was, was it Queen Victoria? Queen Victoria at the time asked the, the, the admiral of the competition, so who came second? And the answer was, your majesty, there is no second. And this has been the mantra of the America's Cup since then, that you strive to train your best sailors and you build the best boat so that you come first. There's no such thing as second. And that's uh, the actual America's Cup. Um, now, the unique thing about America's Cup is that um, unlike Formula One, or unlike, um, say, for example, NASCAR or other uh, comparable uh, uh, racing events, America's Cup has got uh, this particular unique uh, characteristic that is called the uh, the holder of the deeds. So whoever actually won the competition will be able to dictate what kind of craft other people must build for the next event. So what New Zealand did when they won the event four years ago, they decided that for the next one, which is 2021, those people who wanted to compete, they have to actually build a boat that foils. They actually schemes and in fact sails above the water, not on the water. Uh, we'll get to that soon. Um, just want to highlight some of the differences. Uh, on the left, that's actually in the uh, early 90s when Australia too won the America's Cup. You can see it's almost like a group of people having a leisurely sailing uh, afternoon. Um, very few uh, health and safety aspects, uh, as you can see uh, from the kind of clothing that they wear. Whereas you know, in the America's Cup in 2007, 2011, and then 2017, and then 2021, the sailors are actually well equipped because they have to. The boat speed has increased dramatically that uh, it is very similar to how uh, people prepare for the Formula One Grand Prix. Now, uh, these are the three particular uh, configuration of the last three cups. On the left, that's actually from 2013 and then 2017 in the Bermuda. Uh, the American actually won uh, the race and they decided to hold the race in Bermuda. And then uh, um, in 2021, because New Zealand won the 2017, uh, the cup is being held, so the competition is being held in Auckland. And uh, the classification of boat is called AC-75. AC-75 meaning that it is America's Cup class boat with the length of 75 foot or 75 footer, which is equivalent to about 20.7 meter. So you can you know, imagine how huge this boat is. Now, back in 2013, the boat is even bigger, almost double the size. However, it was actually a catamaran, but not only that, um, the speed is actually half, less than half of the speed that we achieve today because it's very much a, a traditional yacht. Okay. Now, um, who are the sailors? For this year in 2021 uh, in, in New Zealand, uh, there are only four uh, syndicates, we call it, or four teams or four groups, and they do represent four different countries. Uh, because of the uh, stupidly expensive the cost of actually building these boats uh, only very few syndicates were able to compete and this year uh, we have um, the uh, the boat called American uh, sorry the team called American Magic sponsored by the New York York Club so in the northeast of uh, United States of America um, and uh, the, the helmsman or the driver is uh, Dean Bucker a Kiwi who actually used to helm the New Zealand uh, boat. And then we have the Team Britain, uh, sponsored by a company called Ineos, Ineos Team UK. 
and based at the Royal Yacht Squadron, I believe somewhere in Southampton or close by to Southampton. And then from Italy, we call we have this uh, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli team. That's because these are the three companies that's actually uh, the main sponsors. Luna Rosa, Prada, and Pirelli, and they're based at uh, Sicilian uh, Sicilia Yacht Club on the south of Italy. And then, of course, we have the championship holder who dictates the design or the uh, how the championship goes uh, this year, and that's actually the Emirates Stem New Zealand. And from the name, you know that uh, it is actually very much bankrolled by the Emirates uh, Airlines from uh, the UAE. UAE. Now, um, the, the, I will get to the detail of this uh, quite soon, but the difference between this year and the previous years is that um, a, a racing yacht, they, they do have, normally they do have what we call a keel and a bump. Uh, a keel is that stick or a piece of metal that uh, goes into the water from the middle of the boat. And then at the end of it, there's a bump. A bump is uh, like a garlic bump, you know, uh, something that is uh, uh, quite oblong, uh, weighs anywhere between three to maybe 12 tons. Uh, normally it's made of 100% lead. So if you are into fishing, it is like, um, what do you call it, a weight of, of the fishing uh, uh, that actually you put to make sure that your bait actually goes uh, under the water. Now, the, the funny thing this time around is that, that there is no such thing as a keel or a bulb. And therefore, uh, in theory, the boat is extremely unstable. Okay. However, what do they have is that this thing called um, um, uh, canting foils, which is uh, on either side. And you can see uh, one actually on the left-hand side of the boat here. And this was actually a drawing uh, from a few years ago where the International Sailing Committee were envisioning that there will be uh, the grinders, uh, the helmsmen, in the middle of the boat. But then things have changed since then. So um, instead of relying too much on the skill of the sailors, this time around, it is also about who can actually fly the boat in the safest way possible in the fastest way possible without actually getting into trouble. So this is actually how it works. Okay? As you can see here in the middle, uh, at the bottom, uh, there's an arrow pointing down that says uh, boat weight, but there is no uh, bump or, or what do you call it, uh, pemberat, I suppose. Yeah. But then what we have is the foil on left and right. And when the boat sails, the boat, uh, after a certain speed, the boat will start to uh, lift its hull above the water. And then it goes left and right um, using the combination of both the canting foil as well as the, 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 the small keel at the back, if you like. Okay. And then the wind is actually um, can come from the light, from the left or on the right, of course. And then that's how the 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 the, uh, the sailing knowledge come into practice, where they have to decide what kind of sail they can use, what kind of sail they should be using to take advantage uh, of the wind. So. Um, the boat will always, obviously, you know, healing left and right, you know, um, and uh, it is always uh, uh, going to be righted by uh, the, 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 the lever on the left and right as well. Now, this is actually, um, in industrial design, we do have this thing called, we call it uh, mock-ups, and then we have prototypes before we have the actual, uh, the, the actual product that goes into the market that will be sold and then sometimes if it's not good enough there will be improvements needed and so on this is as you can see uh, this is a, you know, a foiling uh, boat but it's quite small isn't it? it's only it's got two sailors inside and the main sail and the head sail they're both quite small and yet it is floating above water so this is what we call either mock-up or prototype for the Ineos team uk uh, three years ago or four years ago sorry and this is how it looks like now. This is how it looks like on the water of Auckland. I went to have a look at it a few days ago. And 
it is a far cry from where we were even four years ago. Now, instead of putting the crew right in the middle, they put the, the, the number of grinders on the right and a number of grinders on the left. And that actually helped to bring down and turn the sails around. And the driver or the helmsman actually shifted from left to right and right to left, depending on uh, the, 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 the direction of the boat where it's moving. In this particular picture, obviously, uh, uh, it is foiling. And then you can see that uh, the wind is coming uh, from the right hand, right -hand side. Uh, the counting fall on the right is up, on the left is actually uh, down, and that actually stabilizes the boat. That keeps the boat in the direction that where they want it to go, and it is uh, you know, relatively safe. I think it is it is quite fair to say that the people who design and who sail these boats, they're not uh, the most uh, logical <laughs> people, but they are actually uh, uh, always uh, challenging the impossible. Uh, this is the side view of the Luna Rosa. This, I believe, this was taken in. This was taken in actually in Auckland, um, in its um, uh, full speed. Again, you know, lifting above the water. And this is the American uh, Magic boat that um, almost capsized, uh, as you, that you saw in the video a few minutes ago. So uh, interestingly enough, um, I haven't got, uh, sorry, I do have the video, but I'm not going to show it to you today. You can look it up yourself. The main sponsor, one of the main sponsors for the American Magic team is Airbus. And the Airbus engineers were <laughs> simply using all their knowledge of flying aeroplanes uh, safely, but putting that in the context of, uh, of sailing uh, yachts. Now this video will showcase, will tell us exactly how the technology works, how the design works. This was in um, Auckland again, uh, taken uh, at the, in November last year, November, October last year. You can see the Auckland Bridge in the background. Obviously, for the Prada boat and American Magic that was taken about uh, 15 months ago. So the AC-75 is truly a new concept. They say that it is actually a boat that runs on steroids. So there are four yachts, or eight yachts actually, but four designs. They are very similar to each other. And they are actually designed to to, to to provide the maximum speed possible. It is uh, 16 feet wide and 75 feet long and extremely light, much lighter than the previous boats. As you can see at the bottom, the keel is gone and they you do use these two foiling cans, one on each side. And those foiling cans, those are the ones that provide the leverage for the boats not to collapse. So with this kind of design, the designers, when I say designers, it's both uh, industrial designers, transport designers, as well as engineers, they have a much, much bigger role to play. This is uh, from Luna Rosa, when uh, he is saying that, uh, And it, it is, uh, you know, of Mati Hayes above to um, industrial designers. Um, 
are involved right from the very beginning. Some of them actually are our own graduate from Massey University, where they um, provide the, the 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 knowledge to model, to simulate, and you know, to design all the sections. So all these, uh, uh, the four parts, which is the, the mass, which is the, 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 the metal that goes to the, in the middle that goes to the top of the board holding the, the sail, the canting arm and the keel, they are all standard design. So they're all supplied. But apart from that, each team are able to design whatever improvements that they can. So um, one of the biggest uh, difference is actually the hull design. If you notice that these are the four different boats, the hull is different. Some are actually wider, some are actually narrower, some are actually sharper in the front, some are actually a bit wider at the back. Um, with Prada and uh, Team New Zealand, the bottom is not flat, it is actually curved. Whereas for the Team America and the uh, British team, it is quite flat. So we shall see in the next few weeks how they actually uh, uh, will prove to be either extremely successful or not. Now, uh, the other evolution is that, if you can see here, the actual uh, skin of the sail is actually twin. There's a gap in between. So the sail is actually effectively like an uh, aeroplane wing. The hydrofoil, sorry, the, the foil is like an aeroplane wing. Very much like uh, you see when you fly and look outside, you see the wing of the plane. But instead of uh, horizontal, it is vertical, and therefore the onus is on them to make sure that uh, there's uh, uh, enough pressure to propel the boat forward, and yet safety enough without actually collapsing the boat. Now, these are the two foils on the left and right, and it is provided through uh, battery, uh, sorry, the, the, the lifting up and down that's actually through a battery and the grinders what you see that they, they are actually grinding for the um, for the sale now the wings at the tip of the foil that's actually the different between the different teams so some actually might design it to be you know very much like the wings of a bird some actually try to mimic the fin of a sheep of sorry of a fish of a, say for example dolphin or shark some actually will try uh, actually to um, do it in a certain way so that it will repeat the shape of the foil of the main sail and the head sail so uh, some of you may remember from your physics at high school or secondary school of about creating the high and low pressure by using the two piece of paper. So again, very much like the flaps on an aircraft, you have actually the, 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 the rear half that's able to actually go up and down, very much of how um, you see uh, at the end uh, of the wing of the aircraft. There you see the two different uh, compartments for the grinders, left and right, and you see the helmsman right at the end. The helmsman would actually um, alternate left and right. Now, um, before we go on here, um, uh, if there are, if there is any um, uh, questions and so on, you're most welcome uh, to ask. Okay. 
So, um, what um, I'm going to do very briefly is that um, I'll try to actually uh, show you the different compartments of the boat using this very old technology behind me. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not in my office, so I cannot use my uh, Wacom uh, to show you on the screen. But I think this should be uh, uh, sufficient. Um, Uh, can you see me? Can you see me yet? Yes, yes. Can see you. Yes, you can. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that um, make sure that you can see. Hmm, because I actually can't see myself, so I'm not too sure whether I can. You can see the 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 wall behind me. Can you see it? Yes, I can see you. Yeah, you it's just okay. a, uh, slightly blur. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Hmm. I wonder why. Uh, I can see myself before, but now I can't see now. So, okay, I uh, will try. Eh? If you can't okay. see what what I'm drawing, then then please let me know. Okay. Okay. So, you have. Uh, That's very much you know, an isometric drawing of the boat. Okay. And then in the middle, if I do that, that's the mass. And for this purpose, we'll make it quite short, but the mass can go up to up to 50 meters. Uh, for the current AC75, I believe it's about 28 meters. So you can imagine how tall it is. And then you have one main sail and one head sail and you can have some other sails you know uh, depending on the condition now previously you have this thing called the keel and the bump yeah okay but now that's been taken out and replaced by these foiling arms And this is where it is different than the previous previous um, uh, boats because these are the ones that actually not only makes the boat stable but also make the boat actually move or fly above the water. So that's gone now. Okay. Instead, you're left with these two. So that's why in the uh, in the um, so let me just go back to presentation in the um, in the um, um, in the in many of the uh, uh, promotional aspects of the America's Cup, they say that you know it is very much you know, a crazy uh, project because it is quite crazy because you are taking the one object from the design that's keeping sailors safe for hundreds of years. So it's almost like if you're designing a car and you are saying to people, look, let's take the, uh, the, the tires off and let's move that um, slightly differently. So that's how uh, it has been. Okay. Um, now, because of that, okay, you have design which is you know, like this, okay. And because of that, the way that um, we're building a boat, uh, it become um, 
much more removed than how we used to. Uh, building a boat is very much an art, a tradition. And then you'll see this from the video afterwards. Uh, building a boat used to be that, you know, you put together uh, material, mostly, for example, timber or fiberglass. Um, and then you actually uh, 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 cut them into sections or pieces, glue them together and put a, a different layer uh, on top so that uh, it will be uh, totally waterproof. But these days, um, the involvement of designers is quite different because from the day one, they actually designed the boat, uh, simulating that uh, using uh, a wind tunnel, and then only once they're happy with that, and then they start building. But once they start building, there is very little um, uh, opportunity for them to make uh, big uh, changes. Now let's have a look at how they build the boat. This is actually uh, this was in uh, Auckland. Uh, uh, in the one of the boat yards here, uh, we know where it is, but before this, it was a secret. But it will be extremely fascinating because you'll see that it is still very much built traditionally, but um, through uh, digital design only in the first stage. But when it comes to the building, it is very, very much a traditional design. So they're saying that this is like um, a mini America's Cup, way before the actual racing. The pressure is always there because they have to build a boat ready before uh, the deadline, and therefore it can be tested, it can be put into practice and so on. Um, these people here, um, they consist of, for example, sail makers, industrial designers, engineers, obviously naval architects, um, lots and lots of, uh, for example, people who originally train in uh, furniture design, in um, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, st steel fabrication. And these are all actually being put together to build uh, the, the product in the end. You can see here uh, the software that uh, we use for many years now is software called MagSurf. And unlike cars where people are concerned about, you know, uh, technology as well as the aesthetics, when it comes to boat design, first and foremost, uh, you have to make sure that uh, it is suitable. It will be, uh, you know, uh, safe above the water and then make sure that uh, it goes uh, extremely fast. And the aspects of actually making them uh, aesthetically pleasing is quite low, uh, but it's only towards the end in terms of the applied graphic treatment. So um, what industrial designers do uh, in the workshop of ITM, UITM, with the standing and so on, look, they're still doing it. <laughs> they're still doing it in 2020, or 2021, 2022 even. Okay. This is a slightly uh, story because of the COVID where uh, we have to shut down the facility and I wasn't allowed to actually uh, go and have a look at it uh, simply because of the uh, COVID um, SOP. So again, you know, the use of bulk, the use of uh, the blue foam, it's all real. <laughs> uh, some of my students couldn't believe it because they thought that the boat would be made by machine, you know, uh, machine from one big piece. And when they saw that it was actually being put together like this, they thought that it was extremely traditional. So those are the uh, fiberglass matting, um, uh, special uh, anti, like anti-foul paint, if you like. And um, uh, all of this material are meshed together um, with the objective being to build a boat with minimum weight um, and uh, we provide a minimum resistance to both water and wind. So the aquadynamic as well as aerodynamic.
Now, I my hope is that something like this can be replicated, even in a very small way, in in Terengganu, for example, or in some parts of Selangor, where we used to have hundreds of years of boat building tradition. And then, of course, um, the testing is extremely extensive. Um, at this point of time, you notice that uh, the sailors are not involved. The sailors actually provide input in terms of the simulation, but they're not, they're not always involved in the actual making. But these are where the uh, engineers, model makers, and designers are involved. Okay. Uh, having said that, um, uh, two sailors that I know did study design. So they have this uh, idea about design uh, when they're actually sailing the boat. This is uh, the night when they are delivering the boat to the uh, to the base, which is in the Auckland uh, vineyard water. Obviously, they did this in the evening. One is to avoid the traffic uh, and therefore avoid the risk of any accidents, but also they don't want people to start lining up the streets and wanting to see the boat before the time is unveiled. So as designer, what are our rules? Very interesting, actually, because um, I have had um, students, uh, graduate students, or prospective graduate students coming from China, Taiwan, and uh, North America asking, saying that, hey, you know, um, we quite like sailing. We don't know how to sail. We quite like sailing. But uh, we're actually doing um, a major in, in visual communication design or fashion design or textile design. We quite like to be involved. On the left, you see those are the sailors. Um, not too long ago, okay. What year was that? Uh, Team Great Britain uh, in 2012. Okay, look at their um, um, clothing, <laughs> and look at the way that uh, sailors actually uh, uh, are being monitored uh, uh, currently and also in the last uh, challenge. Uh, they their heartbeat are monitored, their pulse are monitored, uh, they uh, uh, they wear. Uh, uh, equipment that shows uh, different uh, information and data about the boat speed, about the direction, the health, the health of the components, and so on. So very much like uh, Formula One, with the exception, with the exception being, they are actually on the water, and it's not only one person on each uh, transport. So can you imagine if you see a Formula One, maybe a slightly bigger car, and you got 12 people in one car. That's how complex uh, the, the, these boats are because not only they have to design for performance, but they have to consider every single possible uh, mistakes that each of the crew member might actually, uh, unfortunately, uh, um, could, could, you know, could, could perform or could do. So this is actually um, an example that I plugged in uh, yesterday just to show you the different configurations. The one in the middle of the chest there, like uh, the Iron Man um, heart there, that's actually to measure the vital statistics of, of the sailor, uh, especially if you are the helmsman or if you, are, if you are the tactician. If you are the grinder, yes, it is important, uh, but it's more so for the helmsman and the, and the tactician because these are the brains and the and the, the driver of the boat. So on the left, we have the boat from the 2017 challenge. Uh, that was a uh, uh, catamaran, uh, multi hull, uh, with netting in between. Um, much bigger boat, and it flies slightly, but it was not mean predominantly to fly. Whereas on this side, on the right hand side of the screen, you see the, this example for the Luna Rosa. It's not too scale, by the way. This is A75. 
whereby um, the, the 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 canting kill can be seen on the section. So, thank you very much, and um, I would be extremely happy to try to answer uh, uh, any questions at all. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yes, Azhar. Yeah, that yeah, is really, uh, really interesting and uh, sharing your ex vast experience on yacht design. You know? It is great that we are able to have a first-hand perspective and how your experience, you know, going through into the process, you know, you involve uh, directly or indirectly with people who are in this uh, particular uh, spot. Eh? And uh, looking at this um, at this yacht design, this uh, you mentioned just now, uh, people are probably wondering how much does it cost for to build <laughs> just, uh, one yacht? Eh? Uh, say, you know, that, this that. yacht is uh, seriously, seriously stupid, stupidly expensive. You say it. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine how yeah. much this is. Uh, Sports will cost you, you know. Uh, I only can imagine, you no, know, like Formula One, we have uh, this kind of sport is already expensive for us, and uh, yes, yep. two different things. And um, and yes. almost every country can participate in Formula One, but not in your uh, championship yep. or it's American uh, Cup, <laughs> America's Cup. Eh? Uh, yep. Can you just uh, at least tell us how yep. much roughly this? Uh, yep. Because yeah, it's yacht. Yeah, I put uh, <laughs> up on my on my on my phone here my note because I thought that some you know one of you might, might ask that question, and I I was aware of this actually not too not too long ago only about only about uh, a year ago, the entry fee to enter is uh, is a uh, two million dollars per team. Two million dollars. The entry fee to enter two million dollars, two million dollars yeah. And um, we're talking about two million uh, US dollars, yeah. And then um, the the cost of uh, building a yacht it can run from as little as possibly sixty million dollars, or maybe the upwards of three hundred million dollars for the likes of a company by Oracle or the British team, for example, the uh, the Ineos team. Um, New Zealand is quite. Uh, uh, it's, it's very unique. Uh, we have got very little money, and I, I'm being extremely honest here. New Zealand is not a rich country. It's a very little. We, we have got very little money. The the crew of the of the boats are paid uh, a pittance compared to the crew of uh, if you are working for the Americans, for the British, for the Italian teams. So the cost of the boat itself, you know, it can range from as little as eighty million dollars upwards to 200 to 300 million dollars and uh, that is the cost of the boat meaning that the labor uh, the the material and and some cost of the development but not all so that's why uh, for this year unfortunately there were only four teams who were able to compete because of the uh, extremely expensive uh, uh, undertaking yes it's true uh, you know um by looking at the images, the videos, eh, they get sponsors, sponsorships from uh, different different yes. brands. Uh, almost all yes. the famous and uh, exclusive uh, brand that are uh, sponsored uh, for the team. And looking at the attire, you know, they have from head yeah. to toe. And yeah. and the the how the uh, design and of the outfit itself evolve eh? in such yes. a short period. You, uh, yeah. Looking at the images in 2012 compared to the recent one, is totally right. uh, a big gap. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, can I uh, uh, can I can I just before I uh, have chat to uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Just just very quickly, I just want to share your story. Uh, I had this uh, a number of um, sorry not number about uh, three or four in the group who came to see me quite a few years ago uh, about six 
six or seven years ago, and uh, they were they work for the Malaysian government, and uh, I the Malaysian embassy asked me to help them, you know, show them around Auckland, and I did. And um, one of them commented to me that, ah, oh, you know, this uh, America's Cup is all the rich man's game. They sit there on the boat and does nothing, just have fun, you know, sailing. And I have to say, saya terasa quite apa, um, terasa sedih dan kuat uh, agak agak marah masa itu. Eh, sebab, so I said to them, no, it is a sport. I said. So uh, I went back to my car. I took my laptop out. I showed them how at the time, not anymore, at the time, the sailor had to climb the mast, which was about 50 meters high, while the boat was doing you know, 20 knots, you know, uh, say for example, 30 kilometers per hour on a choppy sea. And so and then this particular dato look at it and say, wow, you could die from this. And I say, yes, and people did. <laughs> so oh. and then and then uh, what, what happened was that uh, afterwards I took them on uh, one of the America's cut boats on uh, I think we paid to pay about forty five dollars. And then we came back soaking wet. <laughs> and this and this particular dato said to me Oh, I didn't know you could get wet from one of these boats. <laughs> so, That's yes, it, it is a sport. <laughs> it's a sport, yes. Okay, uh, Encik Azha, do you mind? Uh, we have a few questions for you. Yeah. Okay, uh, the first questions will be uh, from uh, your so, ex-student, uh, ah, Mr. Okay. Nizam Najmudin. Uh, back in 1994-97, uh, he's asking, why is it called America's Cup? I noticed that all the yachts are in dark colours. Is there any significance on that? Yeah, it's called America's Cup because it was the Americans who actually formalised the competition. It was, it used to be called, I think, a Four Guineas Cup because the, the Four Guineas was the amount of money in the UK at the time awarded to the winner. So uh, the Americans, they're extremely good at popularizing sports, you know. You have the cricket and it's not good enough. They have, you have to make it faster. They turn that into, what do you call it? Um, soft, not softball, uh, baseball. You know, uh, you have the rugby. Uh, yeah, rugby. Uh, the American England. football. Yes, I know it's not fast enough. The, the, cut, the number point is just too low. They have mm -hmm. to make it into the hundreds. They change that into American football. So the Americans actually, uh, and thank goodness for that, they are very good at uh, commercializing uh, anything actually. So they actually commercialize, so to speak, uh, this uh, underwater racing. And that's why it's called the America's Cup because it started in, Amer in, in America, even though in earnest, it started in the UK. Yeah. America is always want to win on everything. Yeah. <laughs> they always like and, everything. And, uh, and I have to say, they are extremely good at it, actually, extremely good at yes, it. Yes, um, yes, definitely. Yeah. They are already well-developed country. Mm. Okay. Uh, the, uh, hello, yeah. Just, just so, yeah. Um, in yes. fact, uh, one of the main sponsors until this year was uh, yeah. has always been a BMW, actually. Ah, okay. But not this year. Yeah. But not this year. Okay. Mm. All right, another hello, question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have here online. Okay, we can uh, we can straight go to uh, uh, Tuhaji Azali. Uh, he would like to ask directly uh, questions for you, uh, Mr. Azha. Do you mind? Uh, okay. Uh, please, please. Uh, Sama -sama Tuhaji. Tuhaji Azali. Morning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Good evening or good night now for you, Azali. Uh, uh, it's good night, but it's below Maghreb. Maghreb in about half an hour. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, uh, it's very interesting to to see you anyway, but also your whatever you have presented. It's a very, very uh, what we call this uh, minds caught or blowing you know? <laughs> because uh, very seldom that we we see a presentation of this kind of um, you know, especially the yacht. Now, um, looking, um, hearing at all your presentation and what you have explained. Now, uh, the most concern that I think I want to know from you is that when you say that uh, everything will be uh, involved in terms of industrial designers, that means uh, from the engineering aspect as well as the, uh, uh, the aesthetics or the form forming, 
Mm. Now, in terms of automotive, it is very clear demarcation of function. They yeah. mean uh, they have a styling department, mm -hmm. and they have um, exterior, interior, and they have the engineering of chassis, engine, yeah. body design, and so on. But in terms of this yacht, I can see most of it started with all these uh, engineering foil and so on, mm -hmm. and all those, which I do not know how much industrial designers involved. Yeah. But I would like to just to know what is the demarcation when you talk about the overall uh, process of the design mm -hmm. and the role specific in terms of industrial designer when they come in. Yes. Okay. okay thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Tuanji. Um, if you if you imagine, you know, uh, imagine everybody imagine in their heads uh, the 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 yacht. Okay. Uh, first, we have right at the top the sail. Uh, the the couple the, the layer the sail design is already one thing and the sail design um, I, I can't explain this but traditionally is done you know uh, by families who are always uh, very good at making sails and uh, some industrial designers actually uh, so some some people who are actually from this family in in New Zealand came to study with me and with others to study industrial design because they want to have a formal qualification. So uh, that's one area. And then after that, you have the mass, sometimes up to 50 meters mass, and actually you have the upper deck. That in essence, traditionally has always been the job of uh, boat builders. And interestingly, boat builders are, oft are also cabinet makers. So, so they are very good with building, uh, you know, their aesthetic, I suppose, preferences are quite different than what industrial designers uh, think and how we practice, but they are essentially uh, cabinet builders and they become uh, boat builders. And then uh, downwards, that's actually the domain of purely engineers. That's actually the hull design because a boat Unlike a car, if I may, a boat is always designed from the bottom up. So you design the hull and then only you design the deck and then you put the cabinets and so on if it's a leisure boat. And then you make sure that you can fit the mast with the right size of sail. And then um, uh, specific for racing yachts, we have, I think for the lack of a definition, I would call it mechatronics. Uh, in New Zealand team, they call it a mechatronic team. The mechatronic teams are the team that actually uh, provide the mechanical design and have the have the knowledge to simulate the working of the mechanicals and make sure that they are uh, to a certain level because investments are made to actually uh, uh, machine them and put them in the boat. Now, the other aspects of industrial designers that is, I think is heavily, heavily involved, even though it's not always recognized because quite often industrial designers who goes into yacht design, they either an engineer first and then they come and study industrial design or with some of my students, they study industrial design and they went to do a master's in design, which is also supervised through the School of Engineering. And these are the people who actually do the uh, human factors design. So the ergonomics for the grinders, because just like a Formula One car, again, if I may, I'm not a car designer, if I may. A Formula One car, as far as I know, you design the cabin of the interior of the Formula One car. It's not always, in fact, it's not for aesthetics, but to make sure that the driver can withstand those micro vibrations into our NASCAR for hours and hours. You know, uh, Michael Schumacher, I think he's recovering now, was well documented that he's, he was extremely fit because he can withstand those micro vibrations for hours on end. So um, the, the, the knowledge of uh, ergonomics is extremely valuable when you are actually designing the, the, the place where the grinders and the, uh, the helmsmen actually sit. And then, of course, the last but the not least group of people involving in the design is actually 
the naval engineers, sorry, uh, naval architects. Because the naval architects are the one who actually uh, make sure that everything fit precisely because the sales must come together to provide or to withstand a certain uh, force of wind as well as the hull is either small enough or big enough or large enough or or uh, what do you call it um, uh, sharp enough in the front to uh, go through a certain type of uh, water uh, in different conditions i hope that answers a little bit of, of, of the question so i suppose uh, in summary uh, an industrial designer alone will not be able to function within the team that designs a boat he or she must have an additional uh, skills and in new zealand context those additional skills often come before they become industrial design because they are the, they are the family of sailors the families of sail makers and also because uh, they are extremely good with their hands they build things thank you very much thank you Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, if, 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 I, if I may, sorry, yes. uh, if I may ask, uh, especially if to, to Tuanaji, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm from Besut, Terengganu, and uh, you're from Kelantan. Um, it has been one of my dreams. I don't think that I will ever get to that. It's my, one of my dreams actually to be able to see the Malays who used to be great sailors to be able to go back into not just uh, boat building, but also sailing. But I think, you know, there might be quite some time before we can go back there. Okay, uh, just just uh, to add in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your dream is basically to me when I would, I would more relate in terms of, um, in Terengganu, um, last time we have a doctor, can't remember the name, but he has already passed away. The one that built uh, a, a ship, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but she, he has passed away. But then he has got a lot of students uh, under him or learning under him previously, and they are still building boats and so on. But uh, the one that you are dreaming is basically your dreaming is basically, or your dream uh, is basically um, you need to have people with a passion. Yes. Uh, now, most of the people, they, they are not passionate in the sense mm -hmm. of that kind of sports. They are they are much more on what we call this um, business because mm -hmm. they have a, a, a demand for such boats then they will build that boat and mm -hmm. that's nothing else that they would improve in relations to like the one that you have mm -hmm. involved in, in this yacht of the racing and so on uh, that is a completely different scenario uh, mm -hmm. that you will have to build up the culture of passionate in mm -hmm. the boat building for certain not for business but basically for that kind of sport yeah i agree yes thank you yeah agree. okay thank you to anadia zali okay uh, uh mr azha okay azha we have another question mm -hmm. uh when design a yacht uh what are the things that need to consider by a designer this is a question from muhammad izad mm -hmm. well um first of all uh, because yachts come in so many different categories you know even the sales you got so many different sales um, so when designing a yacht first and foremost um, you have to uh, decide you have to decide or your client has to tell you whether it's actually a sailboat or power boat so those are the two main thing, main categories yeah? uh, kapal layar uh, boat layar ataupun boat boat yang menggunakan enjin yeah sailboat or power boat now, um, within the yacht community, uh, power boat is something that they frown, they frown upon because there's no art to it. You, you jump into the boat, you have got money, you can jump into the boat, start the boat and off you go. Whereas if you want to actually own a sailboat, you have to have to learn how to sail. And learning how to sail, um, I, I, I was very humble by my Kiwi friends, learning how to sail, it's not just about learning how to sail. It's about understanding the, the, the physics behind sailing. So, for example, if wind is blowing this way, but you're going that way, uh, sometimes it defies logic that you can still move forward when the wind is moving this way, but you can. 
And that's why we call it uh, the art of selling. So uh, to that question, yes, first of all, you have to know whether it's actually power boat or sailboat. And then after that, you have to know exactly what is the purpose. Very much like industrial design, very much like when you are scoping for a project for your final year thesis. So uh, is it meant for performance or is it meant for uh, uh, utility like uh, fishing or is it meant for utilities like uh, search and rescue or is it meant for you to show off that you've got money because, you know, that's also a factor. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a final question here uh, from Muhammad Asri Abdurrahim. How do the designer and engineer correlated design key measurement in terms of hydrodynamic and design in designing one yacht? Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, let's focus on uh, racing yacht. In terms of racing yacht, only until about eight years ago, Racing yacht is all about, or was all about um, uh, um, hydrodynamic, which is actually the design of the how, so that is extremely slick, extremely uh, slippery, if you like, so that uh, you have the minimum resistance. And then only about eight years ago, they decided that, because New Zealand won the America's Cup, they decided that they, we want to have boats actually skim on water. Now, because of that, uh, if you are a very good sale maker, say 10 years ago, suddenly you might lose a job because you don't understand the physics of, 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, foiling, the physics of uh, uh, the design of uh, aeroplane wings. Because the sale of the, of the current yacht is not like a sale, it's not a single skin, it's a double skin. And it is like the shape, if you cross-section the uh, bird's wing, it's, it is exactly just like that. So that's why um, the current uh, boat designers uh, in New Zealand, the one that I know of at least, they actually um, retrain uh, for uh, through work. Uh, they learn about um, uh, uh, fall design uh, in addition to the, uh, the physics of sailing that they already know. Bear in mind that the people who understand this physics of sailing, they don't necessarily go and study physics, but they understand because they were brought up by their dad, by their grandfather, who taught them how to sail. So unfortunately, there is no easy way, but it is actually through uh, uh, work training. Or, or if you go to university, but in the real world, if you go to the university, but you haven't been on a boat, you haven't actually touched the sewing machine to to do the sale, or you don't know actually how the how the uh, rudder works. Uh, that really quite you know it doesn't mean anything. So uh, yeah, the 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 big money, so to speak, are given to the people who actually have got the experience, not just the the knowledge. Yeah, I hope that's answer Mohamad Asri's questions. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're running out of time because we have to give way thank for you. our second speaker. All right, uh, for all participants, you still are allowed to ask questions for Mr. Azahar Mohamad uh, in the chat box. So probably while listening to the second speaker, we will uh, answer your question in the chat box. Okay, do your in your questions there. Okay, all right. I will uh, try to answer. Okay, thank you so much. Really enjoy your presentation just now. Thank you. Okay, uh, next, you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will now move on to our second speaker for the day. We have uh, in the house Mr. Efendi Mohammed, experience of eight years in styling design within both exterior and interior, which involve on OEM companies worldwide. Uh, expertise both advanced and production projects and highly competent in design development, digital visualization and full-size model making. Passionate in arts and professional attitude with a master's degree. Focus in transportation design at uh, Umer uh, Institute of Design Sweden. Okay, uh, he also experienced working with Nissan. Uh, without further ado, uh, I will pass the screen to Mr. Effendi. Mr. Effendi, are you there? 
Yeah, hello everyone. Assalamualaikum and good uh, afternoon. Yeah. To everyone, thank you very much to invite me. Yeah, over to you, Mr. Effendi. Uh, uh, excuse me, um, Mr. Azar, can you uh, please uh, stop presenting? Okay, so oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Uh, and give way to uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. um, sorry, how do I? You are presenting, stop presenting. Yeah, thank, you okay. Okay. thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Fendi, okay? The screen yes. is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So I will try to click the, I will try to sharing my screen. Okay, everyone, thank you very much uh, for this session. I'm very honored to to have this um, uh, kind of uh, event. So for today, uh, I would like to share with you guys about the automotive design context um, that related on trend, business, and future. So like, um, our moderator share about my uh, career milestone. Maybe I can just share it very brief about uh, uh, my information. And I took my bachelor degree in uh, in UPM in industrial design. And after that, I moved to Produa as a styling designer. And I, you know, like everyone know that. In Produa, we are working on yeah rebadge and um, collaboration with Daisu, and then after a few years in Produa, I moved to I really passionate to uh, really to study more on in automotive design. So I I moved to to uh, Union Institute of Design in Sweden. So basically, this will be more focus on transportation design. So in Umuyo Institute of Design, I'm more focused on advanced uh, concept, how do we, as a student, to come up with advanced and ideation. Like previously, uh, in Produa, mostly I focus on um, production and some of a uh, few in concept, actual, like auto show, for example. So in, during my study in uh, in Umeå Industrial Design, I have opportunity to uh, have co collaboration with the Audi for sponsorship project. So during the uh, the the project, so Audi came to our school and opened the competition among all the students. And finally, I got lucky to yeah, Alhamdulillah, to get uh, selected on my idea and proceed to full size model and uh, yeah I will show you next and in yeah and then I got opportunity to further my internship in uh, Italy in Mercedes-Benz advanced design project uh, advanced design studio mostly in Mercedes-Benz Italy they are focused on uh, advanced rather than production just uh, maybe 70 percent on advanced and 30 percent on production and Afterwards, I moved to Toyota Boshuku in Toyota Group, mostly focus on uh, interior design. I focus on the seat and um, and door trim. Yeah, so we have a collaboration with the Toyota and also Lexus to be in in the group. So afterwards, I moved to Thailand, back to Thailand, and yeah, as also as a manager, and at the same time. Uh, become a designer so we work for you for me the previous milestone mostly I working on how, how to be a designer just that's it maybe I have less information how to be like to move on kind of management so in in Nissan I involved in design collaboration uh, with the headquarters in Atsugi Japan but in the same time how to bring all the Nissan models to Thailand so this is kind uh, process we involve in styling and in the same time we understanding general information about engineering and uh, CMF like uh, color material and fashion so currently I I move out from Nissan and 
I mostly focus on my design consultancy with my client. So I will move around uh, between uh, Malaysia and Japan in the future soon. But during lockdown, so we will focus on online business. All right. For my focus on this, uh, before we are uh, explaining on my topic. So firstly, maybe most of you guys uh, very well known about this uh, this function, these roles. Okay. I don't have. I only have like personal project and student project because mostly I have been involved in confidential project. Okay. So the first thing that uh, this is just very quick uh, uh, information. Like uh, first for designer that should understand about the, yeah doing an doing analysis, benchmarking, and to understand the proportion, the proportion, what what kind that we design for, and we understand the like trend mapping like we can see on the on the top right and also we provide some concept mood board after we get some and uh, summarize our uh, analysis and finally we involve in uh, ideation so of course uh, we have a lot of uh, process like the come up with design proposal with uh, example they have two proposals here like premium and uh, like very dynamic supportiness export version so yeah this is uh some of the example and this one also some of my uh, personal project that i i really enjoy sketching it's not meaning that designer focus on sketching but yeah the uh, this is some of the passion how to be combined like passion and technical stuff and yeah and then the the second thing is designer for me, I should understand on how to realize my idea on the on the paper, like from the 2D to 3D. So this is some of the example. And then, so mostly I'm working on uh, today's alias. So I try to less using uh, a lot of uh, 3D software. Like basically, we have we have uh, independent. If we have flexible to to select any 3D. Software like for for me, I prefer really on uh, Autodesk Alias, and then yeah, we 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 after we build the surface, three surface, and actually we try to visualize the the three D. Okay, like example, what I did here. So and then yeah, this is some of the project that I can show you guys here. So this is what my uh, project when I was in Sweden and collaboration with the Audi. So the first thing that uh, I focus more on how before we focus on a lot of ideation um, concept and rendering. So first thing is how we come up the idea, how we inspiring, how we get the inspired uh, stuff element. So be, after we fix that, so we can. Uh, bring our brand idea, the initial idea to for the paper. So the, the, my my idea is basically was to inspired by the iPhone. So maybe that time is um, the Apple is really quite new and very famous. And yeah, my idea behind of it to come up uh, the like some the mobility that belong to us i mean close to us not just drive it or something but it kind of more like a pad or like a uh, like a phone that we always bring in our pocket so i try to come up with some uh, proposal and the set first and second and then uh, finally we have some review session a lot of review and come on each study on the model making quarter scale model and finally we build ourselves with our friends and our, our lecturer and all of the university staff and we are uh, finally the models move uh, move to move to germany in uh, Gostad, yeah sorry in Gostad for the exhibition the exhibition so the next one probably yeah this the first my concept uh, my target is to, to share about the design uh, development process and the second thing is 
maybe we are mostly designer, uh, maybe less on concentration on about what we are doing for, what we are designing for. We just not just design on the paper or something like this. So, so from this word is what we require to know other than design development. So this is basic, uh, very general information uh, about the overall situation in industry in uh, each uh, automotive, but basically it depends on companies. So the first we are, I would say we are because we are in design uh, field, so we are mostly around this here. So you know, we in design we focus on benchmarking, a trend, also styling, and how we come up with the innovation stuff. So and the second thing is we are not just in this in the circle in the in the globe. Okay, so we will try to be, we try to open open minded, try to open a little bit. But not to be expertise on another another field, but is to be uh, to to get some information in in general. So, like example, product planning department, engineering department. So we also have uh, uh, have knowledge a little bit on prototyping. Okay. So the idea is also we are not focused on production like engineering her stuff going on in in plan. Also in sales marketing, what we're doing, but sure is we just to get some hints just to get some uh, information so when we design something we know what we are doing okay that's the thing in automotive uh, company that's uh, really uh, sometimes it's uh, important okay it's called uh, it's a lot uh, related on the policies the company's policies okay po company police uh, because it's totally related on how we design stuff and the, the company and the, our employer because we know some policy is okay we can design the whole whole car but sometimes we just do a rebadge or something but this is of the automotive business the second thing is is also depend on the budget you know we can design everything uh spaceship or something but again we still uh, depend on our uh, budget and then, of course, it's also related on market. Market, market, this means that we design for each uh, each region, for like example, uh, Asia, uh, Latin America, uh, North America, Europe. So this is kind of things that the market is very, really important. Because what we can see in the Asia Pacific market here, we are really, uh, I can see that it's really uh, highly competitive to be how we can focus on each region. Okay. Um, oh, do, okay, everyone, anything? Okay, this, uh, do you guys any question or I can move forward? Okay, right, I can, because I cannot see you guys, uh, with, because I only see my, my screen, okay. Right, okay, I, 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 proceed, I continue. Okay, and related on Asia Pacific, uh, what is my observation and um, what I'm done previously? So it's related on how mostly this is Asia Pacific business. Uh, okay, CBU is is imported car, like completely built unit, so it come like completely uh, completely one model car arrived to to the it like imported car and it one model unit imported to each countries okay this is important so you know some of the thing is it's high tech but the quality is controlled and they can focus on sales and marketing and dealership dealership and then the thing is also skiddy like completely knocked down so the thing is mostly happen is this one to how to reassemble the part from outside so the good thing is this is the beginning of how they enter the market and we can assemble the plan and we can do all sales marketing and surely the company love to have this beginning of the ckd manufacturing plan rebadge or something because they want to have uh, low tax 
but in the same time it's really good opportunity and high potential for each region because they will have job opportunity high job opportunity and it can be like region hub for the countries so next one is manufacturing plan manufacturing plan is it's almost same like scary but manufacturing plan is like same thing into the market but it can be manufacturing totally manufacturing in the each out uh, in the region so it focus on inviting all the opportunity engineering sales marketing and also low tax for the countries job opportunity and also can be like region hub mostly it's uh in thailand they are focused more on manufacturing plan because they can be a region hub and they also can import uh, they can export a car to the another close by region like ASEAN Southeast Asia region and also in Pacific area like New Zealand and uh, uh, Australia okay okay the best thing is yeah uh, the market plan if the business and the demand is quite good and sell is uh, higher so it can be rebadged in house design so this is the beginning of really really important situation when even we can create a very small uh, design like we can see like proton currently uh collaboration with uh, it's we owned by uh Gili. so it's really uh, important to have i they will have chance to create the ident identity the identity is really really important that's why the uh, i really highlight for this one uh, industry design and automotive designer especially in automotive designer uh this is to be uh to be basic understanding on how important our region is they will have in-house design like example rebatch and final one new model because you know rebatch even like proton x50 and x70 even they have really small uh uh Rebatch, rebatch, and uh, this is really good a potential in the few years that it will be have uh, potential in the future that we can we can see like Produa, like we can see on the right uh, right one, they can able to create the new models in the house design, you know, like Beza and the latest one, uh, the third generation of uh, MyV, so they are totally flexible and independent to create new models, but based on like example the axia platform and uh by the way they still have uh support supported by toyota and daihatsu also what we can see on the new models category is oh sorry let's back to rebatch okay, rebatch is about identity and it's a good opportunity for the local vendor and big job opportunity for the local uh graduated or professional and also because of these things that oh meaning that the, this this region is very important market even just rebadge and also get global investment even from the local authorities or from international companies and okay then when talk about new models in the how design this means the very very important market and good potential vendor to apply more supply chain and good opportunity again Job opportunity and global investment. So basically, for Produa, yes, in uh, in Malaysia, and for Isuzu and Honda, they have uh, a design studio in Thailand. So, so it's really uh, important. But the the thing is, the rebadge thing is also sometimes it can be not successful if they are not very competitive in each region. Like example, previous. Uh, last year they like general motor um, they have uh, not so the competitiveness in thailand and they just close and move to the latest uh, chinese automaker company like gwm gwm is like great hall uh, a great wall and um a havel okay so it can be like gwm will back to this manufacturing plan uh strategy Okay, I need to check if they, everyone is okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, all right. No, yeah. Okay, I will yeah. continue. Okay. I'm worried sometimes my uh, internet connection is 
Uh, oh, we will we, we'll notify you if okay, anything. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, the thing is, we need to understand about um, what we're designing for. Okay, we continue about this topic. Okay, like example, the lifespan, uh, face leaf, and variance. Okay, so the example that mostly generally uh, happen in the automotive company, I think even not only me, I think everyone very well known about this uh, condition for rebatch and face leaf. The thing is, um, it mostly related on how we change, like example, some part here, like hood, front hood, the headlight, front grill, uh, the front bumper and front fender. Okay, so it means that how we able just this is related how uh, how we up to that uh, design. Okay, even we didn't change so much on engineering part in in the side. By the way, how we like psychology uh, things, but it, it can be in business uh, way. So they change and they can always say, oh, okay, we have a new one. We bash first leap in the, in the coming of coming uh, five months, like example. By the way, just, by the way, they just will just change some, uh, some part only. Or maybe uh, also they not improve a lot on the engine, engine and transmission, for example. Okay, like example on the rear, rear part is spoiler, rear light, and rear bumper back door oh, to that little bit here and the wheels here so this is uh what they call it rebatch on face lip and also they have another strategy is to to have the special edition special edition is totally not so much related on styling uh yeah styling the design department but mostly uh focus on cmf so what we can see example here, Mitsubishi Triton, okay, towards the Athlete GT. So we kind of uh, CMF work and graphic uh, sticker here. And at the same time, CMF designer really involved in how we change the, the face, but without changing the shape. Okay, that's how we call it special edition. So even Ursula Saga, what we can see here, people say, oh, well, we're we not designing anything here, we're not improving, but yeah, basically this is like special edition process. Like uh, to change the color, change the some material, materials part. Okay. Okay. The thing is, this is the yeah. You know, when I was in junior designers, mostly I just continue designing, sketching, and I didn't know that about they will have uh, some like lifespans in or like uh, some period of time. So, like example, what I can mention here. This Mercedes Benz C class. So basically, from 2008 and 2000 until 2012, they have almost using the same platform, the same design. So this is the the thing is. So when beginning of 2015, and they have come up with a new design. So even to 2012 to 2015, they have around three years, and again. So they have 2015 and towards 2019, they only have just minor change. You know, just uh, change a headlight and violet. You know, mostly uh, they're, yeah, basically it's totally depend on a demand and how, if the sale is still, this is some of the reason is if the sale is still good and got the financial uh, condition, all of the, the thing is consideration, so, so they cannot don't want to change it for, for like 2015 to 2019 or four years. By the way, the 2021, no one knows else, no one knows. So let's see. This is the example of the interior. Okay, the interior of the C class from 20, 2008 and 2012. So yeah, they still keep the, the image here. And beginning of 2015 and 2019, uh, beginning of 2015, they changed the design, totally new design, new design that uh, design uh, language, and until 2019. By the way, yeah, in 2019, they play around like that again with styling CMF and UX. So in CMF, they have played around like changing the steering wheels here, 
and UX. UX means like the is changing up to that the uh, LCD screen uh, infotainment example. And final one, 2021, 2021, they focus on how to to change the this in design and how to follow up the trend. So what we can see here, even the C class, they have uh, the center console with the huge LCD screen, like similar like he, the brother is for the the S class. Because the thing is related on the segment and variance. It is quite for me uh, because I'm uh, quite new on the this business, so it's interesting to have uh, different segment and different variant, but using the same design, same platform, the same shape and construction. And then we can see here 2015 and 2019, yeah, just changed uh, how to play around with the CMF, color material and fashion. So they play, play around how we, the, this information, the meaning that how we bring all the one model, one product to be many, many years. So we don't want, we don't really want to change more. We don't want to, uh, Cost a lot of money for spending on the molding or uh, factory to create a new plan, for example. So we play around with new way is CMF change the materials, yeah, changing steering wheel to update the infotainment, and yeah, this is for me. Mercedes is doing well in how to bring, how to keep longest um, models lineup, even this different segment in different variant okay well we can see a c-class sedan uh, and the coupe and the lc and glc the mg also it happened the same with the e-class e-class also doing the same way and also s-class because like the e-class they also have gle gle school gle uh, also e coupe okay local brand okay let's talk about the uh, local brand um yeah basically of course, uh, all the designer proton will more known about the situation here. Of course, this is for me is good opportunity for our local com uh, uh, companies to be involved in this thing. Is so my interest, my big intention is in production lineup is on X50 and X70. Yeah. So this is uh, to show how we play around how automotive feel. Uh, play around with this business and also how automotive designer can give uh, a brief or something hints what they will doing in the current situation because we're not sure yet about the future yeah everyone can be uh, doing expectation or envisage a future but this is kind of what automotive designer involved in design studio so okay back to the proton so we can see his proton x70 and Gilly boy and the first thing they call it a uh, rebatch cbu cbu mean they bring imported one totally new and finally the ckd so meaning that they come up and rebatch like like i mentioned just now to rebatch the, uh, to create the identity to create identity is meaning that the the, the east region is quite important and very important for the uh, to become a region hub that can be also can be uh, exporting to be exported to another country okay what the involvement here is styling CMF and also local how to adapt with local vendor okay so we can see here Frank Gill edit uh, Frank uh, involvement on Frank Gill and the uh, reorganization entity to create the identity and then so you can see in the interior, yeah, you know, I understand maybe everyone well known about the situation is to rebatch is we need to bring all of the things to to set up the platform first and to, yeah, this is the example and to bring this all almost the same thing, okay? Uh, we can see, okay, from the Malaysian activity is on right hand uh, side and the left hand side for driving in China. And this is uh, what I found in the website 
of Gili uh, in Gili website that probably this is the current Gili X7 Sport and they have this is the example on how we uh, again the rebadge and how we facelift how we moving in minor change like example so again like I mentioned here to re uh, to replace a design like hood front grill the front bumper yeah this one they have uh, involved on the side fender so meaning they have a lot of consideration even this is small thing but they have a lot of consideration how to if this part is important to change or do we need to change this or we just keep a design or we can just keep the part because if we change even small part like fender so meaning that we need to change everything even more like example so here we can see they have changed the front gear from upper the headlight oh yeah fender and the side mirror yeah spoiler should be all right and real light real garnish, rear bumper wheel so the small thing that i mentioned in the in the beginning that really important in, in involvement in facelift again but you can see oh yeah again on the right top here as i mentioned maybe this can could be a future x70 maybe <laughs> so let's see and also for the interior uh this is the thing is how we can change this is totally major change this one is minor change and uh, the interior is looks like more major change because they have a uh, changing all the infotainment condition and shifter here and same wheels lcd should be all right touch screen here if give really big impact on the on the design so designer have totally involved on how we uh, we change uh, to rebash on major change and also related totally related with the engineering uh, department okay again for proton so we can see like proton x7 x50 okay actually uh, another gili Kure. this is the update updated one updated one they have previous one they rebatch for this one the x50 again they have mostly involved on styling cmf and how to adapt with local vendor so for the x20 again the the front gear is very important to change the identity and the chrome effect on the roof and small carbon fiber effect for the cmf job for cmf designer okay spoiler to change the shape like we can see on the left spoiler they move up maybe more functional aerodynamic maybe so they have different uh, function so real granis to change uh emblem name to from gd to proton and carbon fiber effect so this is some of designer uh, involvement on even small change okay the interior is what i understand that it just kept the original part so maybe surely they have some consideration in, in related on the budget and uh, uh, engineering okay let's move to uh, our local brand produa yeah basically local produa is also collaborated with Daisu and Toyota. Toyota have involved in in engine, also with Daisu. Okay, the thing is, they have started with the Daisu mirror or Prodo Kanchil. This is totally, for me, this is a good example on how we can change the, the business and how designer will evolve on the beginning of the milestone until the current situation, current uh, achievement. So from the Sumida and they also have upgraded to the Sumida on uh, 2002 that in Malaysia they changed the repress on Prodo Viva. Okay, wait a second. So they have something. Okay, I move back. And then Prodo Viva, we can see have they have involvement. They have improvement on the uh, firstly the fascia image, but they still keep on the side panel. And again, the Daisu Boon, that really big achievement for uh, Moivi. But uh, also Toyota Paso, and we have the product Moivi. That they still keep the wheelbase. And finally, final one, but we can see the line line here. So they have come up with totally new uh, Moivi, uh, these uh, maybe platform, maybe architecture that have more longer wheelbase. 
than previous one and more lower uh, the height and totally a uh, big impact for the Malaysian uh, test and demand. So again, what you can see on the, uh, the, the right side, that's so Ayla and Toyota Aiga, Aiga and final one, Prodra Azia. The, the, the process is that has to be Lumina, Toyota and Prodra Alza and the last one that has to Terios, Rush, and Toyota Rush and Arus. Okay, what we, I, my highlight is on the bottom is how the Produa have uh, the policy will have changed uh, from the rebadge towards more independent uh, in design house, in house design. Okay, so as you can see here, Produa maybe they have totally changed uh, without any rebadge and and also it export to uh, Indonesia for Daihatsu Astra motor and also Produa Beza facility. But you can see the latest one here. They have come up with totally new uh, platform. Uh, I mean, totally new upper body design structure. But in the same time, on the bottom part, still uh, uh, advised and supported by Toyota and Daisu. Okay, and same thing. This story is for this one is how we change based on uh, there has to trios and Toyota Rush. So we play around with the highlight from up uh, the fog line, the accessory. So we call the rebadge and minor change, and also have special addition here. Here on the left side, Toyota Rush 3RD Sportivo. And yeah, this is the process is how we can keep the uh, how designer can keep a design. I mean, the management keep a platform, and how design can change the face for more up to date design in the market yeah even the entry also really big uh, uh, involvement and contribution for uh, rebatch because it can be and also interior have even excited to evolve by the way it, it also very complex because they have a lot of engineering uh, engineering electronic part behind the IP basically the the, re, the involvement the rebadge is involved on not only IP, but of course door trim, also the seat. But I will try to uh, just focus on the IP here. So what we can see on the trios for Indonesia and also Toyota Rush. So they keep the design. They keep a design. Uh, just very maybe they have only small changing. Like example, we can see here on the seat, change the fabric or maybe change the color or maybe later fabric but uh, to, for Prodo Arus you can see they have a lot of uh, involvement on improvement like this you can see here on the IP how to change the silicon is by the way they still have for uh, keep the glow box here still almost the same here and they have surely then it should have the LCD display touch screen to be uh, our how to adapt with our local vendor here and hashtag here yeah the, by the way the the situation is how we keep all these things without change a lot that is quite tricky uh, situation <laughs> okay and we bet okay so okay let's talk about the competitors competitors in uh, basically in asia pacific Okay, and SPF physics is, of course, uh, I am more focused on in Thailand because uh, I have quite understanding and experience during my service in Nissan before. So this is how the process is. Uh, example, okay, I try to have, the co okay, from the left side is price in baht, Thai baht, and on the left to move right side is passenger car brand so the thing is mostly i try and then again on the mapping here i highlight blue color one million baht okay this baht maybe in malaysia is not one million ringgit okay one million baht okay so one million baht i try to have blue highlight here because they have some uh, customer they don't want to be over than one million baht so this is very well that's why mostly we can see 
the vehicle here is almost around the line or bottom but up over here it is quite uh, expensive and high tax so people here mostly thinking about tax tax okay tax and uh, not think so much about uh, fuel okay this is some of i tried to highlight about uh, all the japanese car maker that all quite very well known in thailand and also they have newcomer a few years that really quite successful in thailand like mg and also quite successful for ford uh, that mostly focus on pickup truck okay let's focus on like some big sub compact car or big segment so they have i try to highlight how the computer this mean is basically how to uh, like i mentioned on the top here customer consideration some of the reason is yes design of course design and again next is performance they don't they want to know about the performance that's why and then the safety uh, what is the company provide the safety uh, equipment or safety system in the car and also interior seats that's why they have a lot of change even like example the chr uh, hrv or like uh, sorry crv they want to have uh, uh more seats seven seat so seat is quite uh important for this region and again the value because in thailand they have uh, they are buy sell and use car the this flow is buying and selling flow is very uh, well known and very famous and uh very high to progressive in this region Okay, also the spare part, they are very considered about the spare part and to be sent to the dealership of the hospitality for the customer. Okay. Again, again, also like sedan or C segment, and also they have B segment here. How we can connect each other and how to be uh, competitive in kind of design and the price. So people very considerable and also surely they are very concerning on the brand like Toyota, Isuzu and Honda. Okay. And next one, the, they are more interested on pickup truck because the in Thailand they have really mm, big demand and big market for pickup truck. That's why uh, Ford focus on uh, pickup truck here. Or in Australia, they create youth in Australia, youth and okay. Also, next, the final one, next one is um, they call is PVV, like big mid size SUV. So PVV basically is uh, based on pickup truck platform. Okay, I will talk this one next. Okay, about sharing platform. This also the good strategy and good business for uh, the management and also designer can imagine about the situation here. So again, I try to relate uh, relate on the SPS fee, especially in Thailand, how the the vehicle can be sharing in the same platform, but some is change the design. Okay, what we can see is here in Nissan PVV, uh, like Nissan Terra and Ute uh, pickup truck. Nissan Navra, they have using the same platform. Okay, so the thing is here, how we keep a design again, and CMF designer is very uh, big function on how we change the appearance, the appearance and the design image, but not change anything on the shape. Okay. Like example, a Ford PVV, uh, Ford Everest, and pickup truck Ford Ranger, they are using totally the same design, the same platform, but they only change the CMF uh, function like material and uh, fabric, for example. So this is the keep design. For me, uh, because of the my understanding and my uh, our research last time so people mostly on we need to change 
uh, design for even the sharing platform, like example Toyota. What we can see here, PVV and pickup truck or, or youth, they're basically sharing the same platform, but they want to change a design. It is uh, very for me, and also we have uh, doing we have doing like uh, survey questionnaire for customer on outside, so they are all prefer on because they both this model have different price, and PVV is quite high tax, and for pickup truck so Hilux Vivo Roco, they have quite uh, below than PVV segment so this again it is involved a big involvement on designer like styling and how we change the shape and also cmf involvement cmf designer involvement and also ux uh, designer how we can change the infotainment and we can change the fabric yeah and we also styling also change the shape here and also this all the thing is again we should keep the engineering engineering platform at the back so what you can see here the ac condition on the top we still keep it and the std position still they keep it or hvac area the steering wheel they still keep it okay so everything they keep, basically i'm not sure that people notice it but for maybe general uh, public people, they say, oh, new design. Even, the, no, uh, okay, even the same platform, but they said, oh, this new design. Looks interesting. Okay, they want, to, you know, people want to have option. They want, they want to have, they can select with different, uh, different way. So they have chance to uh, can select which one they are most pre preferable. Also, like Isuzu, focus uh, on Isuzu MUX, MUX and Isuzu DMX. This is the idea, even the sharing, they also using the sharing platform, but they still keep LCD screen. Yeah, the shifter, everything, same position. Okay, the thing is, again, another thing is, some company uh, do collaboration like or Alliance example Renault Nissan Mitsubishi they're sharing totally new uh, same car but change a design so like Nissan Livina for Indonesia market and Mitsubishi Expandia mostly for ASEAN market so they're using the same totally same design but I mean same platform and also the same interior here so they don't want to change so much on the interior but the exterior designer have opportunity to change uh the shape but by the way they still keep on the engineering requirement like the fog light and the headlight basically on the bottom here and uh, uh we still follow them but because they want to have small eyes here so they change the the big light in the middle and then uh, same situation here for Toyota and Suzuki. They are using the same same car here. Toyota Rav4 and Suzuki Cross. So for the entry, it's almost same, but the exterior they change the design. Okay, there is um, the current situation, uh, current business. Um, surely they have a lot more, more many things here. But of course, uh, this is what I know, and I don't want to uh, spend too much hour for explaining this. And also, what the trend is in the uh, in the current uh, current market and current trend is EV. EV is electric vehicle. People more focus on how we change to be electric vehicle. Okay, the thing is, I did have done some uh, research on and reading on about the EV. People more focusing on battery range. How far can be electric vehicle can go? Okay, this is mostly uh, most company th that want to pro uh, want to come out, want to uh, how to say to manufacturing manufacture the manufacturing the electric vehicle is how to 
have a long range battery. Okay, and the second thing, how long the charging period? So they are like racing this time. They're still running, racing for win the competitive, win the challenge, win the competition. And also, yeah, the performance they should know about the, like example, the acceleration, they want to know the stop speed of the electric vehicle. And again, mostly most customers want to know about the char charging facilities. So they want to know, like example, uh, charging, like current situation about the fuel uh, station. So we can see everywhere and we can just fill the oil for the car for just a few seconds, just a minute. So that is what mostly people thinking about the EV. So mostly, yeah, for EV, they will take around 30 minutes to charge. I mean, 30 minutes for 80%, for example, and one hour or few hours for full charge. Or again, to get a totally full uh, full charge again, they need to charge at night, for like example, okay? So the most quite uh, competitive models for the EV currently, currently is model three, um, Posta, Renault, and also Nissan Leaf, quite uh, quite uh, big welcoming in ASEAN, especially in Thailand. But yeah, because the facility and infrastructure still in development, in developing. Okay, so like also in British company like Jaguar, IPS, uh, Volkswagen ID3. Mustang Mac E and also in Jap from Japan in Mazda MX30. So this is some of the example about the EV trend. That's why they are trying to uh, currently current situation about the bet uh, the EV is people want to find like a war. Like I'm have sharing about this story in the previous session, like previous event. Uh, current situation is all around the world. Try to be a winner. Try to be uh manufacture for battery you want to get resources who will come out the, who will provide the battery so we have from japan like Panasonic or from korea from japan they want to win because when they have this thing is they will be uh, they can provide to another another countries because the ev ev uh ev business not about a design car, but who will design the battery? Who will come out the battery? So when you have the battery, so you can you can proceed on engineering and design development. Okay. So okay, some of the information about the EV, like example, what I have here, the Volkswagen ID3 first edition. The interesting of the Volkswagen uh, about the electric vehicle is the battery. Most the current uh, situation is. Most of the company and the models, the battery lithium ion will be put it on the, on the bottom and the, underneath of the interior space. So they will have really freedom. So no transmission here to connect between front wheel and the rear wheel drive. So they have totally independent front wheel. They have a motor drive, electric motor also, and the rear also they have a rear the independent without connected with the front. So uh, the station now is the trend right now. You have big space for passenger to to play around with the the interior. Okay. So what we can see like they have a lot of current station uh, current uh, trend right now. Current company they come up with a lot of EV car. Okay. Okay, maybe I'm talk a lot. So, guys, if you guys have any question, uh, uh, you want to contact me. So let's go to my Instagram and go to my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's uh, keep in touch uh, about this. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Fandi. Uh, yes. That's really uh, interesting. A uh, journey of your uh, insightful perspective into the world of transport design, and yeah. I believe that your talk has inspired many students eh, from our industrial design department. Yeah. Uh, for ladies and gentlemen, uh, you may ask questions for Mr. Fendi. Uh, please your question in the question, uh, chat box, 
and uh, definitely Mr. Effendi will uh, try to answer your questions. And uh, for students, don't hesitate to ask. You can also ask in Bahasa Melayu yeah. if you feel that uh, you are more comfortable in asking in Bahasa Melayu. You are also allowed to uh, ask uh, questions in Bahasa Melayu. Definitely, Mr. Effendi here is a Malaysian citizen. Yeah, despite his uh, experience overseas. Okay, uh, since we, we wait for questions from the audience, uh, I have a few questions for you. Yeah. If you look, uh, okay, we are before. I, here we have the first questions uh, from JJ. Uh, JJ Ismail, how is your involvement with developing design language for a car company? Oh, thank you for your question. Okay, DJ Ismail. Okay, related on how to developing, how long the involvement, how is your involvement? Okay, develop design language. Okay, design language is every single, uh, every company, they have different design language. So mostly they will come up the, before we start the project. So uh, like what I did in Toyota Washuku, uh, we get information from our headquarters, Toyota Motor. So they will have, they will show what they want about design language. What is the shape? I mean, not about shape, what is kind of, what is the customer or client want to see about the concept? This is some of the example. So from that, we can imagine, okay, this is some of the, uh, the proposal from the headquarters. So we will come up with our own design language, but with our own Thinking, we are on thought, but still the same direction. Okay, all right. I hope that's answered JJ's questions. Okay, uh, we have also question from our student here. It's from Armin. Um, Mr. Effendi, macam mana as a student, mm. especially lepasan degree, to involve in transportation company, meaning the design. I think design studio. Eh? How to score? What kind of skills that need to be improved? These are you no know, for future graduates here. They definitely you know be inspired by you. you know you as a local Malaysian and then can travel overseas and uh, study overseas, study abroad and have some experience. Uh, uh, I think you have uh, you know experience with um, Mercedes Benz in Italy. All right, and then you have also in Toyota, in Japan, IT. And then you also have your uh, education uh, experience uh, while studying in Umer, uh, in the Sweden. So uh, he would, ask, would like to know, no? Lepasan degree, involved in transportation company, meaning studio lah, design studio. How to score, what kind of skills. Uh, skills are very important, definitely, yeah? Okay, over to you, Mr. Effendi. Uh, okay, terima kasih uh, soalan dari Armin Design. Okay, first is, uh, before basically kita perlu nak buat clarification before we graduated. Uh, because sebelum kita graduate, kita dah ada macam plan. Plan uh, nak gimana. Jadi kita, first kita buat, uh, kita akan buat research lah. Which company kita minat, kita nak, uh, kita nak contribution, do contribution. Example lah kat Malaysia kita macam-macam ada, okay, macam automotive design, kita ada Proton, Pro2, uh, kita nak ada involved on product design, feature, kita pun ada juga uh, yeah, company. So first is, okay, kalau kita ada peluang untuk jumpa orang atau sekarang ni sangat-sangat mudah untuk communicate lah, ada Instagram lah, Facebook. Uh, jadi kita, kita try lah message orang atau just just tanya, sebab kalau saya lah, tak tahu design yang lain, kalau saya memang saya akan bantu uh, yang student atau uh, yang designer ke apa pun saya akan try uh, give advice to the orang, contohnya okay that is the first thing, kita akan try contact dengan orang second thing is kita mesti rajin tengok opportunity, job opportunity sebab uh, job opportunity dekat local atau dekat international uh, level sometimes most, mostly mostly akan mention about uh, requirement uh, requirement untuk kerja dekat 
each company because each company they have different uh, requirement and that's why kita nak perlu uh, always aware about the uh, about the requirement but about automotive sometimes akan selalu ada persamaan uh, mungkin product design furniture atau uh, field lain mungkin dia ada requirement tu itulah yang kita nak perlu uh, aware lah about the the condition lah hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you. And the next question, we have questions from our students here again. What is the prediction for EV in Malaysia? Will it be with us, Malaysia, within five years? EV or hybrid? Oh, thank you, Afif Rahman, for the question. Okay, that he mentioned about uh, EV, electric vehicle or hybrid. The first one. Uh, oh, no, no, okay, Ahmad, Ahmad, Ahmad Anwar. Anwar. Ahmad Anwar first. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, Okay, EV. Okay, in Malaysia, uh, that one is very cool, tricky question. Saya uh, selalu memang follow up dengan Malaysian punya story about EV. Saya memang ada nampak ada buat collaboration. Don't ada cuba untuk buat collaboration to produce anything about related on electric vehicle. Okay, electric vehicle. Saya ada nampak juga, uh, saya selalunya uh, notice about this dalam news lah. Mereka nak buat uh, electric vehicle. But saya belum, uh, mungkin mereka tengah develop. Tapi saya tak boleh confirm tentang ini sebab saya pun tak sure. Uh, because everything mostly related on the government authority, uh, local government. But I believe that uh, because I have some that uh, mostly connected with the this field and that maybe try like example government uh what we can see like um how to say um mari okay mari uh mari and mosti or something they try to uh give some hints and vision about what they want to involve on the ev uh, but yeah i not cannot confirm about this they will will focus on ev but for personally for me uh, I really prefer uh, Malaysia to involve on uh, electric vehicle. Uh, by the way, we can come up with on our own way and not just focus on electric, or we can have a hybrid and uh, anything else like solar. Okay. All right, uh, next question. Uh, Afif Rahman, okay, uh, about EV. I've did some research and found out Proton and Prodron development mm. developed their own EV hybrid. But why those concepts did, didn't didn't be fulfilled until now? Okay, good question, Afif Rahman. Um, basically, mungkin not only Proton and Prodron will come up this development uh, stage. Maybe more than this, mungkin banyak lagi company yang akan cuba untuk come up this EV. But you know this electric vehicle, we can come up with prototype. Surely we can come up with prototype. But how our prototype can be uh, practical and can be how we can realize with the all the financial with, from government come up now. Uh, because come up with what prototype ni? Samun. Um, dia bukan mudah, tapi prototype ni just one model. But how to bring uh, the, the electric vehicle on the line of production so we need to have big big uh, budget uh, big budget so we need to have uh, uh, assembly plan or uh, anything so let's mostly it related on how our government to decide uh, yes. hmm. yeah i agree with you mr fendi yeah. <laughs> big budget uh. okay. yeah to run a uh, ev is not easy eh? yeah and also the policy that we need from the government, they, they need to overlook or not everything when we try to have EV on the road. Yeah. Okay, next uh, we have uh, Fatul Akma. Hi, Mr. Effendi. What are the key factors for design studio or car designers influencing investor management in producing full-scale concept models? Okay. I, I try to find them. 
key factor for design studio so design studio investor producing full scale council model oh, key okay basically oh key factor okay thank you fatul uh, first mungkin dia dia ada banyak-banyak factor contohnya kalau dia ada di okay dia also related on policy and the company service contohnya macam pini farina dia memang totally policy untuk come up with supporting another car company untuk come, uh, come up with their the client car contohnya Vinfast ke atau sebelum ni uh, Proton ada involvement dengan Pini Farina like example so it depend on demand depend on people uh, ada car company yang request okay macam tu full scale possible <laughs> alright uh... Next questions from Zakia Hassan. How do you see Malaysia automotive industry in the next future and design importance in this competitive market? Okay. Okay, thank you Zakia Hassan. This is very good question. <laughs> How do you see my, uh, about Malaysia automotive industry? Okay, the first is, um, yeah, before the, <laughs> I don't want to be very political and uh, <laughs> situation like after the PRU 14 of, uh, and then the situation is what I, I think everyone noticed about is that uh, the first is all the investor is moving out uh, from Malaysia to uh, our neighbor with countries like Indonesia that is the first thing is and the second thing is because we are um, focused on like manufacturing, manufacturing plan for uh, another company like Honda we have in Malacca and uh, if we want to uh, about potential is we only have our local brand is like uh, Proton and Produa even Proton and Produa right now is like uh, uh, not collaboration but they are really owned by Gili for Proton and Produa by uh, Dahasu, so mostly it depend on their owner. I mean, uh, their, their agreement. So we are don't ha we don't have any. Uh, we can surely we can propose the our future direction. We've come up with our own uh, our own vehicle, but it's totally uh, uh, like three cut than the own the owner company. Uh, the head like. Uh, yeah, the headquarter lah, head company. Hmm. Jadi kita terikat dengan macam tu lah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, next we have add-on. Uh, uh, Afif Rahman, add-on Indonesian government already create <laughs> awareness on EV as well as invest in Tesla. And Indonesia is starting to import Tesla into their market. But why Malaysia is still falling behind? Another, another oh. question. Uh, and okay, sorry, I see something like the question line. Okay, uh, Afif Rahman. Okay, uh, Indonesia government and you think, uh, okay, okay, I found so long. The Sekarang Indonesia government already create the awareness, not just awareness, and how the the uh, government, local government to open to investor and how to make trust to investor to come to our uh, our country to invest. For like example, like macam di Indonesia, there are, they found a new uh, resources material uh, component for making battery. Okay, in Sulawesi, Sulawesi. Jadi, there is new, there is first thing, they found a new resources in Indonesia, first thing. And the second thing, they also related on our the government uh, intensive lah macam uh, want to contoh lah tax ke apa facility untuk our foreign investor and second thing is mostly of course related on demand and population uh, because Indonesia have quite big population and also related on labor labor cost mm -hmm. labor cost actually labor cost ni in ASEAN is quite good uh, good competitiveness contohnya kat Thailand and Indonesia mm -hmm. I agree on that, uh, mm. especially in uh, Indonesia, we have, mm. uh, they have 
uh, labels, eh, which is uh, mm-hmm. really, really uh, quite cheap and then can meet the demand of uh, automotive industry. Whereas mm-hmm. uh, even in Malaysia, there are some limitation on that. Mm-hmm. All right, next we have another question. Hello, sir, from Hazik. Recently, we saw that designer can't meet well with the engineer department decision. Sometimes the engineer side would say they don't understand in technical things, but then the designer also say the same thing in terms of aesthetic value. So how can the both side meet mutualism in technical and aesthetic things? Uh, this is common. Uh, this is yeah. common. Yeah. yeah, this is a good question also and common yeah. situation here. Uh, this is um, how we design an engineering engineer to in negotiation. Okay, jadi selalunya, okay first kita designer, kita ada our own, uh, we need to keep our own aesthetic. Uh, because before we bring our idea proposal to engineer, engineering department, kita mesti uh, but one, 90% or 100% that this design is totally uh, follow the trend and follow the requirement uh, and then this is totally uh, not only shop sendiri uh, tapi totally uh, okay they follow the aesthetic and the requirement and then when you bring this all the proposal to engineer can they say okay this one maybe you can order maybe you try to push a little bit push hard a little bit and Cuba push orang untuk follow our design, but if they cannot do it, try to find another solution. Like maybe we try to keep design, but kita in different solution. Uh, but by the way, kita ada engineering pun, engineering pun ada limitation juga. Kita tak boleh push sangat, so mereka pun bila kita push sangat design nak sporty semua semua, jadi don't nak tukar seluruh mall. Jadi kita yang nanti <laughs> kereta pun jadi mahal jadi yeah. totally related uh, totally related yeah. on the mall and oh kita ada miss and is abang Nizam Najibuddin kita punya abang Nizam question dia tadi yeah 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 sorry oh, sorry Nizam. i okay. missed that ah sorry mr nizam hi oh, mr randy thailand ada plan nak buat national car dia orang sendiri tak ah oh, ni memang good question lah <laughs> eh hey, iyalah thailand ni memang hub region hub yeah. kat asia Asia Pacific. Tapi saya tanya wife kan. Wife saya orang Thailand. Thai. Tapi kenapa orang Thai ni tak come up with their own automotive company? Sebab kat Malaysia kita nak ada untuk car, kita ada produk orang kotor. Untuk motorcycle pun kita ada modernize. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, there is the thing is, the first thing is, they are, for my opinion, okay, because there are um, many automotive company invest and build their manufacturing plan here. A lot, oh, a lot, a lot, a lot, yeah, uh, a lot, too much, and my all the Japanese company over here, they uh, they build the manufacturing plan, and again, not only Japanese company, there are other there are the um, US, contohnya Ford, everything, everything is drawn board, uh, hilang kat sini. Lagi satu, uh, of course lah. Like, related on the government uh, policy. Uh, yeah. government. Everything is about policy. Policy. Yes. Uh, policy. Mm. Okay. I hope that's answer Nizam questions. And then we have Paul Young here. Have you always wanted to become an automotive designer? And how has your education shaped who you are today? Yeah. That is good, good question. Thank you, Paul Young. Paul Young. Yong, okay. Paul Yong. Okay. Paul Yong. Okay, thank you, Paul Yong. Okay, first is actually I will start from beginning. Since I kids, uh, saya tak pernah, uh, saya tak tahu sangat tentang automotif. Tapi saya suka drawing tu biasa. Uh, suka lukis, mana ya? Art and also I love about art things and also related on scientist, scientific things. Contoh contoh lah. Jadi bila Bila education ni kita masuk uh, science science lah, apa matematik lah kita lost sedikit kita punya fashion tu. Bila, tapi bila dah sampai UPM, uh, saya pun tak tahu juga apa yang saya apply tu kan. <laughs> saya apply je eh, arkitek lah, engineer lah, uh, in, recovery to industry. Tapi bila saya, Alhamdulillah bila sampai ni, 
saya, okey, this is my passion. Saya memang minat sangat benda ni. Saya betul-betul bersungguh-sungguh kan. Uh, memang fokus. Jadi bila dah fokus tu, saya nampak something that really interested me. Contohnya, automotive designer. Jadi bila saya tengok automotive design ni, uh, for me it more bring me a passion. Passion tu sangat penting lah. Kita punya uh, minat dan kita punya minat dan uh, apa lagi yeah, kita cuba untuk explore benda ni lah. Bila kita dah minat tu kita akan explore. Jadi kita ke okay, explore kita saya pun tanya-tanya dengan senior. Kita, saya buat berisik sendiri. Uh, Cintulah first my answer. Jadi oh. bila saya okay bila saya dah dah tahu minat tu saya try focus on this thing only. Memang tot quite risk for me because cuba focus on one thing. Tapi disuatkan minat, jadi saya cuba uh, usahakan and then of course bukan kita move, uh, kita kerja sendiri, kita cuba tanya dengan kawan-kawan lain, sini-sini lain yang hari, uh, sebelum tu saya ada sini yang until sekarang saya contact contohnya uh, tweet, uh, abang bro tweet kita and then again saya tanya-tanya ada wak pun ada datang universiti uh, untuk ajar wak dengan Prof Suli, jadi diorang tunjuk cara-cara buat otomotif kan jadi bila orang buat demonstration tu saya tengok saya pun masuk kepala tu lah, faham lah. <laughs> Jadi bila dah masuk produk tu totally we need to move to another design. After we have education, academic uh, platform, there is quite uh, maybe theory, trial and we need to more technical uh, process. Alhamdulillah move to the produk, produk show totally show uh, totally new way and how we bring our academic way to more technical way so we, uh, saya belajar dengan saya belajar tentang design uh, and full scale model and how to build model okay that's the thing the beginning okay good uh, thank you um that's how uh Paul Young, Paul Young sorry uh, i hope uh, Mr Fendi answered your questions next we have from Muhammad Izad in design automotive who will involve in final uh, decision making design decision making okay final decision making okay, final design design final design yeah okay. he emphasize on design yeah of course the first thing is before we move to the uh, design uh, review kita mesti dia ada step by step kan kita for designer dia akan review first to the in among the team and then review again to our manager or supervisor and then uh, of course we need to revise all the idea and finally we will uh, presenting to uh, top management so mostly the management will approve the design design proposal okay yeah everything will go back to the top management eh? yeah top management. yes Top management will always do the decision. Okay, uh, this question is from me. Okay, oh, okay. since uh, you know, uh, you're still a young designer, uh, uh, consider you are still young designer and full of uh, passion in doing automotive design. And you also have experience uh, doing design in various uh, design studio overseas. Can you tell me what are the differences that you experience uh, while uh, uh, while doing design with uh, this uh, different background of people, especially the Swedish, the Italian, the uh, the Japanese, and now uh, recently uh, the latest one is uh, Thailand, Thailandese people. So there are different uh, perspective and views eh, of how mm -hmm. they design. So can you please share your experience with us? Okay, thank you for your question. Basically, uh, my answer is the first when we're working on the each company, it will be related on uh, poli the company policy. Contohnya kita design, contohnya involvement on uh, full involvement on full de car design, totally, uh, uh, how to say, not just rebadge, but totally new design, okay? So it also depend on each policy. The company policy is totally different than another company, okay? 
And then the second is how we adapt with the environment with a different background and the countries. Basically, it's also quite tricky, especially on language. Uh, language. But in uh, in Europe, mostly it's not so difficult to communicate with other people because uh, everyone will speak norm, uh, basic English, normal English. But when I was in Japan, so it is quite uh, challenging to explain or to presenting to another people because also it depends on which region you working on. Like if you work in Tokyo, Osaka, so most maybe most people can speak in English, or maybe my area is quite a uh, 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 how to say suburban area. So suburban in, in yeah. Aichi, right? Aichi. Yeah, in Aichi, Aichi. is in Aichi in Toyota City, so totally in industry area. So people not so much speak in English. So this is the thing is and all, yeah, policy and how the government how to live to each country is also related on the. Uh, not only work environment in the studio, but also related on how we spend our time outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's totally different. <laughs> yeah. One more. Uh, I think I I need you to answer this for our future graduates, huh? because mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a Malaysian and then uh, and then I'm as a lecturer myself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, looking at the the current generation and the existing generation their endurance in doing design is not as before can you please advise uh, these future graduates eh, uh, how to survive eh, especially in this uh, industrial design world or specifically uh, in automotive design because uh, do you, how to overcome uh, the hardship, you know, the endurance, the difficulties in in surviving in other people's country. Apa yang saya boleh bagi dan sihat to all the student is first, bagi saya memang kita perlu give. I hope that all Malaysian student involved in design, not all surely, but I really hope that all students in uh, more involvement in design because design is part of the passion and at the same time it can be a big contribution for the countries like we can come up with our model our product okay because currently we less basically we less come up with our own product so like example in uh, all the developed country like america us Japan, you know, they have their own what um, product like Samsung, Apple, for example, anything, and Hyundai or Kia. So the thing is, this is the first thing that how we can, uh, how the student and the basically the government or the the, the industry uh, company to have uh, in touch to be always do collaboration with the student. That is the thing is also. So industry people and uh, government must to always uh, do collaboration, do sponsorship with all the students, and to give more uh, information to all the students. And the second is uh, how to bring their passion and how to bring them interest on design. First, of course, uh, um, I'm not sure uh, because during our time that design is very uh, fun to do but maybe they uh, have limitation for current uh, generation um, maybe they are more focused on gaming <laughs> maybe <laughs> gaming station because you now we have quite easy environment like we can just install the apps to change the movie the video everything even uh, graphic design we have a uh, website Canva, for example, to, yes. to design for them. So uh, the trend can be changed, but how to make a student keep uh, progressive and uh, how to say creative? Yeah, that is the all the like I said just now. The academic institution and the government always 
uh, always keep in touch with them and always give them, uh, show them about uh, interesting thing, give them absorb absorb on the information outside here. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fendi. Uh, we have another two questions from the audience here in the chat box. Um, when thinking about the functions of a design, are the options of transportation functions given by the company or thought out by the designer when brainstorming? Do you still have brainstorming? Do you do brainstorming anymore in uh, design studio? Definitely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Thought out by the designer. Yeah, basically, we should start the brainstorming. We should do some, if we work in a team, so we should dis do some discussion. Uh, we uh, we do brainstorming. We just, like example, they have some method, a lot of method. Uh, some of them we can just make on the note uh, and just put on the wall, just very rough sketch on the paper. And we just keep sharing what our, our basic idea, the original idea. Uh, and to sh and show to another team, our team, among our team, and even before we present it to our supervisor. So this is some of the process of brainstorming. Okay, next, another another one, sorry. Uh, from your point of view, how do you say about the current industry of the design profession in Malaysia? And how can we change the perspective of the people of the design? Because the current generation thought that the designer profession is just art and craft. Yeah, I understand that. that's the question. Ah, uh, the thing is, um, because the environment and the culture that mostly try to categorize, try to divide. Like, okay, we have doctor, engineer. Uh, so people will just thinking about it. By the way, um, there is we need to tell people about what we are doing. Sometimes we need to share to people what we are doing, uh, like example. Because like example, we mostly in movie, we watch about uh, about pilot, about how engineering is stuff. So we need to advertise people. We need to tell people that what we are doing. So we need to do a lot of exhibition. We need to uh, sharing our about our work information to uh, global or to public. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think it's already uh, nearly quarter past five here in Malaysia. Okay. All right. Uh, what's the time now in Thailand? Uh, around four. Around four. Okay. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I think there's no further questions. Uh, is there any last uh, say from you? Would okay. you like to say anything to the audience? before we we close up everything oh yeah basically no, i don't have so much uh, because i already share all the information just now so i will just say thank you everyone uh, for listening to our session today and thank you and yeah, all the okay. best uh, please uh, like example if you guys have any uh, question or want to ask something or anything just contact me through my instagram or my facebook Okay, noted. All right, uh, do uh, follow uh, Mr. FND Instagram yeah. and Facebook. All right, okay. Uh, thank you so much again, uh, Mr. FND. Uh, ladies you, and man. gentlemen, uh, we are already uh, at the end of our session here. Okay, we really uh, hope that um, the future graduates, uh, the audience here will be able to benefit from the sharing and conversation that we have part two in today and extending the learning beyond the physical classroom and into a virtual space. All right, enable the greater experience for knowledge acquisition that every student deserves, especially during this pandemic. We really, really appreciate your participation today and don't forget to fill in the attendance and feedback form. Um, Please register your attendance by using the link and QR code uh, provided in the screen. Uh, as for IDE students and staff member, a certificate will be provided to you uh, soon. And also, please check out our, for our next webinar session on 22nd January, 
which is going to be uh, uh, this Friday, our fifth uh, IDE webinar series, uh, Human Factors in Design. Uh, we're focused on topic of discussion, designing with user comfort in mind. Uh, we have, we'll be having uh, our first speaker is Mr. Erwin Reza Shah, agronomist uh, from Venus University, Jakarta. And the second speaker will be TS Dr. Saifu Hasri Ramli. And definitely we'll keep you updating via IDE social media. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again for being with us. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed all the sessions as, as much as we had fun preparing them for you. We apologize for any shortcomings. On behalf of our organizing committee, we would to express our highest gratitude to our respectful speakers and audience for today's session. We wish all of you the best and may Allah the Almighty keep us safe during this pandemic, inshallah. We will surely look through your feedback and address it in the future. Thank you and hope to see you again in future. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Have a nice day.